cis and trans alkenes are diastereomeric, all other things being equal, as a result of the restricted rotation around the carbon-carbon double bond and the fact that these are not mere images, but they do contain groups in different positions in three-dimensional space. With Diastereomeric alkenes, though, we run into this nomenclature issue that we noted earlier for tetrahedral stereogenic carbons, in that these two compounds, based on the naming conventions we've developed thus far, have the same name if we don't incorporate cis and trans. These are both 2-butene, right? I have four carbons in the parent chain, four carbons in the parent chain, and I've got a double bond at position 2 in both of these. So they're both 2-butene. We don't have a naming convention, aside from cis and trans, to distinguish between these compounds. And while cis and trans works great in theory, there are many cases where cis and trans is just too simple. For example, if we have a tri-substituted or tetra-substituted double bond where these H's are gone, but we still have kind of a cis-trans issue with rel the relatively large groups, say, in different positions, and two diastereomers. We can't use cis and trans. We need some other more systematic convention for naming the configuration of a stereogenic alkene like this. And by stereogenic alkene, I just mean an alkene that has a cis-trans issue, where if we exchange two of the groups at one of the carbons of the carbon-carbon double bond, we end up with a diastereomer. For example, a, a trans-type diastereomer, if we make that switch starting from a cis-type structure. And the convention that we use here is called the EZ convention. So like we use the letters R and S with tetrahedral carbon, we use E and Z with alkenes. And these are exactly analogous to and really generalized versions of trans and cis respectively. And I'm going to highlight the trans in red and the cis in blue on this slide, um, and the E in red and the Z in blue on this slide. So how do we determine the label for an alkene with given structure? We do something similar to the RS case, but it's actually somewhat simpler in that we only need to prioritize two groups at each carbon relative to each other. So we're going to assign a 1 and a 2 to the two groups assigned to each carbon. Then we're going to find the higher priority groups, the groups with priority number 1 at each carbon, and examine their relative position. When those higher priority groups are on opposite sides, of the double bond, like we see here, we end up with the so-called E configuration. And this is from the German word entgegen. And it's analogous to trans, right? The two one groups, the two higher priority groups, appear trans in this structure. If the two higher priority groups are on the same side of the double bond, well, then we end up in the Z situation. And this is analogous to cis. Another way to remember it is the Z isomer has the higher priority groups on Z same side of the double bond. That's the Z from the German zusammen configuration. And this is analogous to cis, obviously, right? The two higher priority groups are cis to each other. So this EZ convention is highly similar to cis and trans. It just incorporates this prioritization step, which allows us to generalize out cis and trans. We don't need H's, for example, to recognize um, an E or Z label at a stereogenic alkene. Let's practice labeling the configurations of the stereogenic alkenes and the compounds below. The first thing I wanted to point out here is that this is not a stereogenic alkene because there are two equivalent groups on one of the carbons. And exchanging those two hydrogens obviously leads to an identical structure. So this alkene we can completely ignore. All right, let's look at this alkene, though, which does have four different groups attached to the two carbons of the CC double bond, and so we have an EZ issue here. On the left-hand side, we prioritize the CH2OH group as the higher priority group, thanks to this oxygen. The first point of difference is O versus C here, and then the tert-butyl group gets priority number two. And on the right-hand side, we've got a CH2 and a CH2. We've got a CCH and a CHH. And so the bottom group here gets higher priority. And we see that the two higher priority groups are on opposite sides of the alkene here, opposite sides of the carbon-carbon double bond. And so we've got the E configuration right there. And I just drew in the implied hydrogens here to make it clear where that first point of difference was in these two chains when we were prioritizing. All right, let's go to the second example. Well, here we have 
an H, a C, and a C versus a CH3. And so the bottom group is going to get higher priority than the group here. And then on the other carbon of the alkene, we've got a C, C, and an H, and a C, C, and a C. So the tert butyl group will get higher priority there. And if we focus on the higher priority groups and how they're oriented, they are on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond. This is a Z alkene. Finally, in the last case, fluorine is heavier than carbon. And so we're going to prioritize the fluorine as one and the carbon as two. And at the other carbon of the alkene, I've got a CH2O situation, and I've got a CCH33 situation on the other side. And so the CH2O group is going to get higher priority due to that O versus C, first point of difference. And the two higher priority groups are on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond. And so this is, again, a Z isomer. So again, the easy nomenclature convention just gives us a way to name the configuration of a stereogenic alkene in an, a perfectly general way that doesn't depend on a 1-2 disubstitution pattern like we'd typically need to name cis and trans.